Good evening, everyone. Hi, Omasi, for the invitation. My name is Cheryl Kennedy. I'm the chair of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde. I've served in the capacity, or I served on our tribal council now for almost a quarter of a century. So it's uh, been a, a very wonderful opportunity. Um, I just want to mention briefly the homelands that you're on are from my people, the Clackamas people. Um, I'm the great-great-granddaughter of John Pacino, who, <laughs> thank you, who this uh, facility is named after. Uh, we lived for time immemorial here fished these waters, dug the roots, gathered all of the materials for our baskets. We, uh, John is mentioning to me, take my mask off. I'm not sure what your protocol is here and I don't want to offend anyone, so. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it is a little hard to talk under that, but you know, one of the things that I've been taught through my heritage, you, you move through, you be respectful of people, you acknowledge where you're at, and you do the best that you can. So in representing my people, I want to do the best that I can. Um, I just wanted to mention to you, uh, before we moved on, uh, my mother just passed away. She was 97 years old and uh, often told about the stories here on the river and all of our people that were here. And last year when this name was brought up and we were notified that this was a good probability it would be named, and then eventually we received word that it would be named, I told her, Mom, you gotta come with me. And she said, yes, we'll, we'll do that. So I know she's here in spirit with me and she's cheering me on and she's so grateful as well for the honor uh, that's been the recognition of our family and the people that were here uh, well beyond our times. So uh, I do have with me a cousin who will be talking a little more in depth further down the agenda, Greg Archuleta, who many of you know, um, we're from the same family, same tribe, and uh, who will be talking more in depth but I wanted to let you know that this land has always been a place of welcome, not only to uh, all of the settlers that came, but to the tribes that came before them. This was a place of industry. This was a robust place of economics. And my grandfathers managed the falls that you see down there. They were in charge of the fisheries and they welcomed other tribes, other native people here where they could fish and they could have, we could share the abundance, recognizing that our creator, creator of all people, was the one who blessed us with that opportunity and we shared it. We wanted to be in right standing with the creator and there were certain principles we had to follow. One of them was to share, to be generous, and we did that. So uh, you will know and you probably have heard that there are other Native Americans who do come here and we still welcome them, uh, recognizing that this was our historical practice and we will continue to do that. We know that when we do that, we're in right standing with our creator and blessings will continue to come to us and our people. So the land, just to say also the land that is here occupies the blood of many of my ancestors, the graves of many of my ancestors, and it's a very sacred place to us, and uh, thank you for, for the work that you've done here in a good way, in a respectful way, in a way that uh, celebrates and honors our people in our tribe, but in return, that also demonstrates the honor you have in your heart, being honorable people. So I thank you for doing that. And this land welcomes you. The Clackamas tribe welcomes you. 
and the Confederated Tribes welcomes you. So with that, I want to go ahead and uh, ask for uh, John George, who will do an invocation, and then there will be a drum song by his son, Tynan George, and by my cousin, Greg Archuleta. So I'll turn this over to them. Thank you for this honor. Also, I, I have the honor also of sitting at the table of our tribal council table with Cheryl. Um, what a very, very honorable lady she is and to, and to uh, work beside her and knowing the caring heart that she has and the caring heart she has for our people. And so I also, I, you know, respect you know, to, to, to pray in, in your own way, in your own language, in your own religion. We're, we, we respect all, all religions here today in Zatu. And so, um, and also to honor our creator too, we ask if you can to stand when we give invocations to, at this time too. So thank you. Nagashlush Tumtum Uksan. Today my heart is good. Rasaklahi Taiwawa, our Creator, the Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you have given us. We thank you for the beautiful people who have gathered here today. We thank you for the honoring of the name this building carries, an honorable name from an honorable family of Chief Wachino, who oversaw this area and the mighty Willamette Falls. Today, we pray a blessing upon each and every one and their families. Today, Lord, even as we gather but even in our area, in this area, and all throughout, we pray for the Lord's hand of protection upon each and every one. A hand of protection, we know upon our people, we come from resilient people who have overcame the diseases that had nearly wiped out our people here. But today we are living testaments who have survived through those times. And as we pray for our generations to come, that we, that we are resilient people and that we will overcome this invisible enemy, enemy who tries to come against us, against our health, against our elders, against our children, our parents, our aunties, and our uncles. Lord, today, we, as we come to celebrate, to know that the name of Chief Wachino will live on, and to know that this, these lands uh, that we know and the history that be taught here too, but knowing that of the good and caring people and the strong people who are still living here today from this, from these people, from the Clackamas people. Today we thank you for our veterans, Lord, who, who have served, who are serving, or even yet to serve. We are such grateful people and we ask a hand of protection upon them also. So today, Lord, this celebration and the honor, we thank you for the minds who walk upon the land here at Clackamas Community College. 
We thank you for the president. We thank you for all the professors and the teachers. Lord, too, are just filling our minds, the minds of our young ones with knowledge that they, too, would grow to be productive and caring people. So in this, as we stand today before you, Lord, we are just grateful and humble people. So in your name. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us today as we celebrate the dedication of the Wachino Welcome Center. I'm sorry, <laughs> that was so moving. Thank you. Is it appropriate to give a round of applause at this moment? I'm Irene Konev, and I represent the cities of Camby, Malala, and I serve on the Clackamas Community College Board as a board member. I'd like to thank the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde for being here today and for starting our dedication event with such a beautiful and moving invocation and drumming. This sets the tone perfectly for today's celebration. Though we would like to have invited the entire community to join us for this dedication, our in-person audience is small but mighty. Glad to have you all here. And for those of you who are watching us on the live stream, welcome, and you are here in spirit with us. Um, as we get started, I'd like to recognize some of our special guests. Please stand as I call out your names, Confederate Tribes of Grand Ronde members.
Tribal Council, Councilwoman Cheryl Kennedy. <laughs> Tribal Consul Councilman George, uh, John George. <laughs> Greg Archaluda. Did I say that right? <laughs> and now I'd like to invite the board members that are here to please stand. Uh, board, board Chair Rob Wheeler representing Happy Valley. <laughs> Chris Groner representing Oregon City and Westland. <laughs> Jane Reed representing Estacada and Colton. Aaron Woods, representing Wilsonville and West Lynn. I don't know if he's made it here yet. And our newest board member, Greg uh, Hawthorne, who will be representing Gladstone, but he could not join us here today. I hope he's watching on, on the online. And I would also like to introduce President Dr. Tim Cook. Oh. Greg Chamoff, I'm sorry, representing Milwaukee. Look at that, I forgot. That. He's gonna, he's gonna pay me back someday. I know he will. <laughs> I know I'm speaking on behalf of all of us when I say that it is an honor to be dedicating the Wachino Welcome Center. Though we are still putting the finishing touches on this beautiful building, it is a culmination of a long and thoughtful process. Many of you have helped along the way, including the support of our elected officials, legislators who are hopefully watching on live stream today. Thank you, thank you all. This building is, is a new home for the college's student services, as well as the new front door to this college. This project is one of several projects paid for by the 90 million bond that voters approved in 2014. How many of you were here in 2014? Round of applause. <laughs> Um, and it is supplemented by an $8 million funding from the state legislature. Thank you to CCC President Emerita jo Dr. John Joanne Truesdale for securing that additional funding. Without her help, this would not have been possible. <laughs> the Wachino Welcome Center will be housing advising, counseling, education partnerships, financial aid, registration, testing, and placement services, and a beautiful welcome desk. We are intentionally creating a space where students have, have most of their questions answered in one sitting in an area instead of going from building to building and from room to room. As you see, the college all, was also remodeled. The former community center to provide a facelift right here in this room. Some of us cannot recognize this room even now. Um, the associated, this room will be providing admissions, associated uh, student government, the career center, the disability resource center, the multicultural center, and the veteran center. These improvements will create study spaces for students as well as easy access to the Cougar Cafe. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Tara Sp Spray, Dean of Academic Foundations and Connections. Thank you, Irene. <clears throat> Hi, I'm nervous. I mean, I'm Tara. Uh, I'm Tara Spray. I'm the Dean of CCC's Academic Foundations and Connections Division. I ask you to take a few minutes to remember the first time you were in a new place. Maybe it was a, your own first day of college, or a new job, or the first time you visited a new health provider. Are you there? Do you remember what it felt like? Were you anxious? Confused? Overwhelmed? Did you know what questions to ask and where to ask them? Did you doubt your decision to start that experience? Now, imagine you're a new student at Clackamas Community College and you feel that same anxiety and doubt. You aren't sure how to access your financial aid. You heard you need to talk with an academic advisor, but you aren't sure who that is, what you need to talk with them about, or where to find them. You stand in a long line hoping that the person greeting you will be friendly and welcoming. And when you finally get to the front of the line, you ask a few questions only to be told you're in the wrong building. So you walk over to another building to ask for help, and you tell your story again. You finally get to meet with an advisor, but at the end of that meeting, you still have questions about financial aid, so you go back to the original building and stand in line again. 
two years ago, this would have been your experience at Clackamas Community College. When the steering committee met with the awesome OPSIS architectural team, oh, you guys, uh, to design the Wachino Welcome Center, our goals were to improve the student experience and increase their ability to clearly find their way among the many, many resources and outstanding employees we have at CCC. The result of that effort is this student services building that sits squarely at the front door of the campus, which is a rarity in higher education. Visitors arriving by bus or car from the main entrance to the college can easily see the words Wachino Welcome Center and know to come to this space to be welcomed and assisted. We also reimagined how we will serve students by creating the concept of the one place. Imagine again you are visiting campus for the first time with many questions, anxiety, and hope. You will now be greeted at the welcome desk and asked how we can assist you. Depending on your needs, you will be guided into a space that includes computers that you can use to complete a transaction like registration. But because you might need assistance with this, we will have students who are trained to help other students, called peer assistants, on hand to provide that support. Maybe you need more help than the use of computer. We will have several counters and private office spaces available for staff to come to you to answer your questions. Let me re reiterate that key component of the one place. Staff will come to you. If you need to pay a bill, a staff member comes to you. If after paying your bill, you need to talk with a financial aid specialist, that person will come to you. You don't leave the one place, we come to you. In this way, we seek to eliminate the bouncing between departments and buildings. We eliminate the expectation that you tell your story multiple times. We intentionally created a space for you to feel comfortable, confident, and have your needs met in one place. We are grateful for the OPSIS and HSW teams for helping make this vision a reality. I am grateful for the Wachino Welcome Center Steering Committee and CCC staff who helped make this a reality. I am grateful to the Clackamas peoples whose land this building sits on and for the Confederate Tribes of Grand Rod for their support and help in the efforts to honor Chief Wachino and his family. We look forward to opening our front door. Oh, holy cow, do we look forward to opening our front door. <laughs> and inviting prospective students, community members, and visitors, and assist assisting them in reaching their goals and dreams. Thank you. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the amazing Stephanie Schaefer. Thank you, Tara. My name is Stephanie Schaefer, and I have been a full-time counseling faculty member since 2012. Since I started at CCC, many shifts have occurred in the arrangement and delivery of our student services. When I think about the Wachino Welcome Center, what comes to mind are three words, intentionality, belonging, and gratitude. I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about these three words and how I see them represented in this new building. First, intentionality. For the first time in my career, I witnessed a building being built, not only with how best to serve students in mind, but how to allow student services professionals to best provide their knowledge and assistance to students through the intentional design of the building and the remodeling of our existing spaces. I don't know the nuances of design decisions in all of the student services areas, so I will speak to what I observed as a member of the counseling department. Previously, the counseling office in the community center often left people feeling uncertain if they were allowed to enter or if they were entering an employee-only area. Not all of the counselors had offices in the community center, which means students sometimes had to go to other buildings for their appointments. This could be confusing and frustrating for students. They also had to enter and exit the counseling department from a highly visible door in a busy common area, not something that allowed for as much privacy as you might like coming from counseling services. We provided feedback about the necessity of excellent soundproofing, a desire for integrated white noise machines into our offices to increase the privacy of our sessions, and a second door for students to exit out of to increase their confidentiality when accessing services. Most importantly, all our counselors will be located in one space where we can easily consult with each other and provide high quality and efficient services to students. We have an office for community organizations, which will allow partner organizations to provide students, uh, services to students right here at CCC. This reduces the need for students to commute to obtain the services they need, increases our ability to collaborate 
with these organizations and improves our ability to prov provide appropriate referrals. We now have a beautiful, functional, and welcoming space for students that centers their privacy and ease of access. Second, belonging. The building was designed with students in mind, allowing them to connect more effectively with student services and with each other. The spaces are designed to welcome students to the college and create a sense that they have come through our front door and they are welcome here. The naming of this building is also an important milestone in the sense of belonging. Naming this building after an important member of the Clackamas people helps to center the history of the incredible indigenous peoples who cared for this land and made it possible for us to be here today. It honors the Wachino family legacy and provides an important opportunity for the college to educate ourselves and our communities about the contributions of indigenous peoples that have been all too often left out or inaccurately presented in our country's history books. Third, gratitude. The intentional design, the increased capacity for students to feel a sense of belonging and connection, the honoring of indigenous peoples and the choice of name for this building, and the chance to be a part of this important milestone in student services makes me feel grateful. I can speak for my counseling department colleagues. We are filled with deep gratitude at the creation of a space that both centers and facilitates the delivery of excellent student services. To all those who have made this possible and all those who will access the Wachino Welcome Center, thank you. We are so grateful. Next, I would like to introduce our student speaker, Summer Barraza. Hello everyone, I am Summer Barraza and I am the Vice President of the Associated Student Government and I am attending Clackamas Community College for an Associates in Applied Science and Business. However, this isn't my first year or second year in college at all. It is my fifth year collectively and my fourth year in total of being a student at CCC. The year that we are missing is the year that I went to Portland State University in which I recently graduated last winter. The reason why I came back to CCC is because this is where Opportunity and I found each other many years ago. And that is not to say that PSU didn't provide me with those opportunities, but navigating a whole four-year system in downtown Portland is very intimidating. I was absolutely lost and overwhelmed while at university, struggling with the location of services and easy access to someone within those departments to give me the information I needed to ensure my success um, during my time at PSU. And I can't tell you how many times I had to start an email to my counselor, starting off with, hey, Tanya, it's me again. I need your help. I was a student who was walking in the dark, hoping to fumble with the light switch, and the room would eventually light up, and I would know where everything was. But that didn't happen until the worst manifested itself. I was put on academic probation twice in a row during my time at PSU. And I know it's not very glamorous of me to talk about it, but this is something that students go through every term, every year, and likely because they do not have a place or person to refer to for assistance. With the Wachino Welcome Center opening, I know that it will provide great relief and help to students who were, are, or are about to be in a similar situation to my own uh, for students coming straight out of high school, for adult learners wanting to continue or start an education, or for those who are seeking vocational training, this space is for you. This building will be the heart space for those on campus to gather and seek help, celebrate each other, and celebrate their journeys onto higher education. With that being said, ASG would love to celebrate the journeys and successes of the student body, as well as ease the hardships that they may endure too. And we are able to do so even more now that the center provides more space for our multicultural center, community wellness center, clubs, grants, and many of the new services that we will offer in this heart space. Students will not only get the answers they request within the campus's new heart space, but they will be welcome and included in a space that is built and operated by students for years to come. 
We at ASG are very excited to get back onto campus and begin our work with the student body after a few long years operating everything remotely during a pandemic. As I'm sure everyone else here is sharing the same sentiment and is awaiting the return of normalcy. And the Wachino Welcome Center will be a great welcome back gift to the students when we are ready for in-person operations again. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome up to the stage Bob Cochran. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the Wachino Welcome Center. This is the fourth and final piece of the 2014 bond, right? Uh, my name is Bob Cochran. I'm the Dean of Campus Services here at Clackamas Community College, and I have the amazing privilege to thank some of the project management, design, and construction teams who have worked so hard to bring this project from a few scratches that we put on a notebook on a way home from field trip to OSU, U of O, and Lane to what you see, see here today. In fact, one of the first concept drawings I have hanging on my wall in my office. This is the beginning of the Wachino Welcome Center. This is two boxes, two circles, and four arrows. And from this, we built what you have in front of you today. We started the work on this facility in the fall of 2018 and broke ground in March of 2020. During that time, the team has become like family. Since the start of that project, some of our family members fed children. We've lost some family members to our family. We've lost family of our family members. We even had Molly the Chocolate Lab and brother and sister cats adopted into the family. And nine pit bull puppies were recently born. <laughs> Through it all, we've become good friends. As I, as I call you out, would you come up since so the camera can see you? So, First, I would like to acknowledge and thank our program manager and owner's rep for all the bond projects that we've had, including the Wachino Welcome Center, the Anisi Group. Since 2015, the Anisi Group has kept us on track, providing great oversight and advice, budget tracking, general guidance through all our projects. This includes Carl Schultz, <laughs> Patty Miles, Ben Ahn, and Claire Hansen. Claire was a student and graduate of CC and also an ASG president. She was hired by the Anisi Group and is currently working with them while finishing up her degree at Portland State. So if you guys could stay up here, I want to bring everyone up. Uh, these four not only represent a lot of hard work, but there's a whole team of people back at the Anisi office who supported this project. So I want to thank them too also. The next, a building such as this is only possible with great and creative minds, people who listen to our dreams, ideas, and desires, and are able to translate that into a reality. Our design team was led by Opsis Architects. Paul Kinley, a partner, John Shore, partner, Lauren Loosevelt, senior associate architect, John Morrison, associate architect, Mike Gorman, associate architect, and Laura Grover, Senior interior designer. Yeah. Again, these few represent another entire team back at the office who worked very hard to turn ideas into drawings that could be built. This team also included primary subconsultants, Katina Engineering, who provided the structural engineering services, and John McDonald. Mazzetti, who provided our mechanical, electrical, and plumbing design services. Duan Tran and Aaron Scheiss. I think Aaron's here. And, and Cameron McCarthy, who provided the landscape design. Matt Kohler and Jason Giles, that amazing lo lobby that you walk through the centerpiece of the campus. So you guys, come on up. And finally, it takes a city, not a village, to build and remodel something as beautiful as the Wachino Welcome Center. The team of Howard S. Wright started mobilizing equipment to begin construction in the March of 2020. They've done an amazing job coordinating hundreds of workers and skilled craftsmen, craftspeople, to complete a building of this magnitude and complexity. 
From HSW, I would like to acknowledge Troy Dickinson, President. Josh Congdon, Project Executive. Carrie Park, Project Manager. And currently the mother of nine pit bull puppies. Andrew Ferguson, Superintendent. Eric Scrugg, Project Engineer. Mike Rylands, the foreman, I think he's, and Scott Maxwell, the estimator. Now I'll look to you guys. Did I miss anyone who's in the audience? Help me out here. Okay, so this is your team. So thank you very much. You guys can leave. I'm going to talk about other people now. Um, so I'd also like to thank the numerous Clackamas Community College employees who've worked so hard on this project. This includes everyone in campus services who were involved in many elements of the project, especially moving people out of this space and back into this space. I'd like to thank IT for their work on computers and monitors and phones and cameras and the business office who made sure that all the invoices were paid and checks were sent out, totaling about $130 million. And since I have the floor, I would like to have three people come forward, Patty Miles, Lauren Loosefelt, and Mickey Yeager, who I hope is watching online. So if you guys could come up, I'd like to talk to you. So Patty, you've been with us for over six years, providing amazing support as our owner's representative. You've helped us select architects and contractors, work tirelessly through the details and nuances of all our projects. At the last count, we had about 200 weekly bond meetings on the record, um, not, in, not including procurement meetings, bond communication meetings, un, uncountable, not unforgettable, meetings on design and construction. <laughs> We want to thank you for your hard work on all of our bond projects, so thank you. Lauren. <laughs> Lauren actually started working on our bond projects at the Harmony West project when she was an architect with Hennebury Architects. She was great with child during the design of that building but was not able to provide construction administrative services on the project as she was home with her newborn son. When she returned to the workforce with the office, she, she returned to the workforce with Opsis Architects and began her work on the Wachino Welcome Center. However, during the design process, <laughs> again she was with child and soon stayed home as Mara was born. She was unable to finish the design, but was able to return to provide construction administrative services for this amazing space. Lauren has said, if we pass another bond, she's going to have to get a bigger house. <laughs> so, Lauren, thank you for bookending our projects. You've done great work. Thank you. And Mickey Yeager, who is unfortunately not with us today, she's a special projects coordinator for the college and has, does, has done so many amazing things for all our projects. She has worked in the background on furnishings and casework and colors and floorings and room signage. She's been involved with every aspect of these buildings, including moving staff in and moving staff out. I guess that would be the other way around, moving staff out and in. <laughs> she stepped up and became the owner's rep on the Wachino project when her retirement left that role empty. She's been the project manager on Randall Hall locker room upgrades, elevator replacement, Barlow Automotive project, and campus-wide signage project, which include the new wayfinding signage you see in campus and the new entry monuments that you see as you enter campus. So I want to make you know she's done amazing work. We thank her for all the details that make these projects so successful. So thank you, Mickey. <laughs> and finally, Lori Hall, who's the college's executive director of college relations and marketing. Lori really works the background on events like this, and we just want to say thank you for this party and your amazing work. Thank you.
now Jamie Damon. I think, are you next? Okay. I'm not going to let you leave yet, Bob. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, Bob probably wouldn't want to see me up here, but I'm here anyway. My name is Alyssa Mahar, Vice President of College Services, and I want to say a few words about Bob. Many of you have seen Bob at these events, sharing the success of the bond program, but you may not realize that Bob works in amazing ways behind the scenes. I'm going to try not to get emotional up here. It's going to be hard. Um, Bob has paid attention to every last detail of this bond program since its inception back in 2014, taking care of all the new buildings, all the remodels, new classrooms, and all of our upgrades, deferred maintenance. He's really taken everything into account seamlessly, and he's paid attention to the budget and the timeline. And many of you may, may, maybe have not seen that work. I have seen that work. The leaders of this college have seen that work. Bob has also set an incredibly high bar for external and internal um, partnership and collaboration that I don't know if many of us can achieve. And he's done that over so many years consistently. Bob has been the voice of reason and calm in the room when there's ever an issue or a concern or a challenge. And for those of you who've been part of any of the projects, you know we've had a lot of challenges along the way. And Bob has turned those all into opportunities. So um, for that and many other reasons that I probably don't have time to talk through, it is with honor that I recognize Bob Cochran for the CCC Excellence in Leadership Award for his work on the bond program. So congratulations, Bob. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much. I'll just say, you know, it's, um, it's been a blast. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I came here kind of on a whim in a sense because the job that I wanted at the city of Gresham didn't work out. And, um, and uh, the previous finance director, Dean of Finance, said, you might want to come look at this. And so I thought, well, that's like a little city. I can work at Clackamas. <laughs> And to think that four years after that, you know, we were we were blessed with $90 million, which we turned into $132 million, and we've had so much fun building these four buildings and other projects. So thank you very much. I'm Jamie Damon. I'm the president of the foundation for Clackamas Community College. And I just want to say, everybody that has come before me makes our job easy. So thank you for that. And thank you for including the foundation in this dedication ceremony. I've got three things to share. Um, the first is a big thanks to the Sunderland Foundation for their $500,000 contribution, which paid for the furnishings that you see around the building today. It's provided a comfortable and cohesive space for our students. Second, the donor community wall is being assembled and we still have space available. The foundation is looking for invested partners of CCC throughout the years. To date, the wall includes community members who have helped with the 2014 bond, CCC retirees, and individuals dedicated to the values and mission of CCC. And uh, where is Sarah? Sarah? There you are. Sarah, show us where the wall will be. Okay, thank you for that. Yep, so it will be installed as you come into the front door next to the front entrance. So there's still time if you're interested um, to be an investor and have your name on the wall or dedicate a space for somebody, please contact Sarah. Um, third, when I was talking to Sarah and Elizabeth about pulling together my remarks for um, this dedication ceremony today, they reminded me of you know, all of the work that, um, you know, how many of the, of the departments within the Wachina Welcome Center actually are partners with the foundation. 
financial aid and scholarships work with each of us um, to award hundreds of thousands of dollars in foundation scholarships, as well as collaborating with partners like counseling, admissions and enrollment to provide ad hoc or emergency funding from the foundation. Education partnerships provide essential connections with high schools throughout our district as we continue to dedicate an honors scholarship and an academic opportunity scholarship to graduates from each school. ASG, we heard from Summer, um, as one of our most substantial partners in this building where the foundation provides financial assistance to the free food pantry, grants for childcare stipends and textbooks, and for being a fantastic partner distributing CCC foundation funded Chromebooks available for students to rent each term. Transportation works with us to provide affordable transportation funding to students in need of bus passes, bike rentals, and other transportation needs. And the Vet Center, just right around the corner here, advocates on behalf of student veterans and partners with the foundation to provide scholarships, funding for materials and supplies, and emergency grants. The entire journey of a CCC student begins from this spot, and we are so proud as a foundation to be part of that journey. So now join me in welcoming our president, Dr. Cook, and Tribal Council Chairwoman Kennedy back to our stage. Good afternoon. I, I also wasn't prepared for how emotional this would, this would be today. Um, <clears throat> When we first started planning the student services building more than two years ago, we wanted a name that was easily identifiable so students in the community would recognize it as an obvious place to get information and to get started, hence the Welcome Center part of the name. At the same time, we also wanted to demonstrate inclusivity in this building and to honor those who were on this land prior to the college. To explore this concept, the college conducted face-to-face -face interactions, surveys, presentations with students employees, and the Board of Education to see what resonated. One well-supported suggestion that came up a number of times was to name the building after Chief Wachino, who had signed the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855 on behalf of the Clackamas people, and was later removed to the Grand Ronde Reservation. And a cohort from the college met with the Grand Ronde Tribal Council, and there are several members here that I want to point out. Dr. David Plotkin, our Vice President of Instruction, if you could stand and wave. Tara Spray, who you've met, went with us. And James Brant Therese, one of our English faculty, was actually one of the original um, suggestions, gave one of the original suggestions to name the, name the building, um, went with us, and met with uh, members of the Tribal Council. And to, our purpose in doing that was to ask for respect and to make sure that what we were doing was the right thing to do. And so we, we met with them and received their full support, and we were really honored um, to have that meeting and to, to hear that. It wasn't until after that meeting, though, that I learned the impact of naming this building in honor of Chief Wachino when I received a letter of support from the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde Cultural Resources Manager David Harrelson. Uh, in this letter, he wrote, Naming the Welcome Center after the Wachino family not only honors the first people of the land that Clackamas Community College sits on, it also follows the traditional cultural customs of the Clackamas, um, of the Clackamas as the indigenous people of this place. These customs include the obligations of the people of a place to be good hosts by welcoming and caring for their guests. Naming the Welcome Center after the Wachino family allows for this cultural teaching to be represented on the college campus named after the people and customs it will honor. I am truly honored to affirm our ties to Clackamas people of which the college is named after and to honor the custom of being good hosts and caring for our guests, our students, and our community. And at this time, I'd like to invite Tribal Council Chairwoman Cheryl Kennedy and perhaps Greg Archuleta to share a few words. Thank you. What an honor to stand before you this evening. Thank you, President, or is that your title? President Cook. Um, truly, I am grateful to stand before you and to know that our people continue today if... Um, the intent uh, was carried out back in the 1700s and the 1800s. I'm not supposed to be here. We were destined to be all exterminated. We were destined to be, we were uh, 
sought after to end our lives in our people because we were a threat to the newcomers. But I'm very happy today that we are people that survive. As I mentioned earlier, we are traditional spiritual people. We believe in the creator, the one that's above all, and through his help, we're able to be here today. So I'm very grateful about that. I will go ahead and turn this part of it over to Greg when I talk about my family. As I told you earlier, I just lost my mother a few weeks ago. And it's, it's a little emotional to talk about my family ties and that she was supposed to be here with me. So I will turn it over to my cousin here. Thank you, Greg. Sahayam Kanaway Tilikum, Naga Mislite, Kaba Slush Tum Tum, Naga Mislite Yakoa, Kaba Matsaika. I just first wanted to do a welcoming in our, our tribal language that we use today, the Chinook Wawa, and say uh, this just happy to be here today. Uh, my name is Greg Archuleta. I'm a member of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ron, and I also work with the tribe today in the Cultural uh, Resources Department. And my office is actually up in the, here in Portland. We have an office up in Portland. But uh, Shell's asked me to talk a bit, a little bit about our family, and the Wachino name, um, and um, our our elder ancestor, Tai Wachino. Uh, was Chief Wachino, uh, pr primarily known as Chief Wachino, Chief Dan Wachino. And then his son was John Wachino. And then his daughter was Rosie Wachino. And then Rosie married Lonnie Tom. And that's how Cheryl and I are, are related. Um, their son, Elmer Tom, is Cheryl's grandfather. And then um, his brother, Irby Tom, was my great-grandfather. Um, and so that's how we're related um, and being direct descendants than the Wachino family. So it's a great honor to be here with the naming of this building today and just wanted to kind of share a little bit about our family and our ties and connections here um, to this place. Uh, Chief, Chief Wachino actually had a village, uh, uh, multiple villages, and one, one of them was up Eagle Creek, and that's where John Wachino was actually born, there at Eagle Creek. Um, that was their winter village. And then he'd come down to the, to the, down the Clackamas where they had numerous other villages. And then at the mouth of the Clackamas and the, uh, to the Willamette and um, had fishing areas there and along uh, the Willamette River to the falls area. Um, and during the summer, they pretty much spent their life uh, fishing. Um, and as Cheryl has mentioned, that it was uh, important for those fish, not only for subsistence, but it was also for trade. So we'd host a lot of other visitors here for trade, um, fishing. There would be those people that would come and fish for Skokwell also at Willamette Falls. And then also the portage over the falls was maintained by the tribe. So there was a small fee kind of to help you get your canoes and your cargo over the falls. But that was part of the lifeways of the Clackamas people in this region. We had different places along the river for fishing, uh, as mentioned, along the Clackamas. Um, another important food was the Wapato. We had different places along the Columbia and the Willa lower Willamette where we'd gather the Wapato, which was a tuber um, used uh, for winter foods. Um, in the village, Life, we had this, I mentioned multiple villages um, from this area. We had uh, places down by the river uh, where they had uh, strawberry gathering areas. They had this big open field where they'd play a game that we call shinny. And um, during uh, one of the things that we would do is that there would be an annual celebration of the salmon, the return of the salmon. And as part of that, um, what they would do is they'd actually have races up the, the hill from Oregon City here um, with the young people, and those young people would race up, race up the hill here. And then those that uh, were the top winners then would be the ones that actually would place uh, wooden um, cranes or blue herons along the river. And those cranes were pointed downriver to watch for the first fish that came up the river. 
and uh, it was part of a, a, a salmon ceremony that we had, and there was a period of time where you couldn't fish in the in the river, and um, after contact, some some of the people learned the hard way. <laughs> they try to violate that, but um, of course, um, then came contact, and the the wave of diseases that severely impacted our tribes in this region. And then, of course, came the time when they said that uh, the treaty was negotiated, and so Chief Pacino was the primary negotiator for the Clackamas. And then on, on my family side, I'm also related on the other side to um, the Tai John, who was on the uh, West Lynn side. And so he was a, a, a treaty signer for the um, uh, Willamette Tumwater people who lived on the west side of the Willamette River at the falls. And so he was a treaty signer on behalf of them and then Chief Pacino on behalf of the Clackamas people. And so the treaty was signed and then there was the, the time of removal uh, to the Grand Ronde Reservation. And it was a very hard time. Uh, we have a, an elder um, that re was recorded by Melville Jacobs, um, Victoria Howard, Clackamas, and she told of, 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 of learning the story from Tai Wachino's, uh, one of his wives that he had and, and about the removal um, in the Wachino family and not knowing if they'd ever be able to come back to their homeland or not, but going to the new place in Grand Ronde. And um, he actually broke up his canoe because he didn't know if he'd ever be able to come back. And if you don't know, canoes were had pretty in high importance during those times. Um, that was our main mode of transportation. It represented status, etc., depending on the canoes and things that you had. And so that was a pretty, pretty impactful moment of having to do that. And then we relocated to the Grand Ronde Reservation, where, of course, many, many, many promises were made that were not kept. Um, as a result of that, to keep the people alive at Grand Ronde, uh, the Wachinos families and John, Tai John's families, they'd come back here to Oregon City and they'd fish and they'd gather the salmon there, steelhead, the eel, skokwal, and then they'd go and have those shipped by the barges then up to Dayton and then sent to the Grand Ronde Reservation. So while they were still there at Grand Ronde, they'd still maintain that connection here to the place here and it was so important for the survival of our people so that Cheryl and I could stand here today and many, many, many others of our, our tribal members. And so today we're just really grateful that you were able to do this building for us in, in memory of our ancestor and that uh, it's very representative, um, as mentioned of, of, of as Cheryl was saying, of, of that welcoming, the concept of sharing and that, um, that connection that we have not only with the Wachino family, but the Clackamas people, the Willamette Tumwaters, Malalas, et cetera, that were in this region. And so we're, we're really grateful for that. And that uh, it's always important that we recognize, and as Cheryl and I stand here, and as Ty is here, and John here representing the tribe, that we are very much alive, that we are here still. And then today, we're just expressing our gratefulness for this place of being here. And we hope to have some of our tribal member students, of course, be here <laughs> participating too. So as we say, Hayumasi, many thanks. Thank you, Tribal Council Chairwoman Cheryl Kennedy and Greg Archuleta. I'd like to take the time now to say our land acknowledgement, and I appreciated how you started us off with the land acknowledgement, and so I want to, um, and somewhat as we get closer to, uh, to ending, I want to read our land acknowledgement as well. We acknowledge that the Clackamas Community College campuses reside on the traditional homelands of the Clackamas, Cascades, and Tumwater Bands of Chinooks, as well as the Tualatin and Pudding River Bands of Kalapuya and the Northern Malala people. They lived and prospered by maintaining strong cultural ties to the land and through wise management of resources. As signers of the Willamette Valley Treaty of 1855, they were removed from their homelands to the Grand Ronde Indian Reservation where they became members of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde. Please join us in taking this opportunity to thank and honor the original caretakers of this land, their lives, and their descendants 
that live on as tribal members today, still carrying on the tradition, traditions and cultures of their ancestors. If you join me for a moment of silence and reflection. Thank you. I'd like to extend my sincerest thank you to the members of the Confederated Tribes of Grand Ronde. You've guided and advised us with the naming of the Wachino Welcome Center and the development of our land acknowledgement. We've learned much from you, and I look forward to continuing that education with future partnerships. Before I close this out this afternoon, I want to thank again Bob Cochran and the Campus Services team for their work on our bond projects. As we heard, Bob and his team keep our buildings up and running and the grounds cared for. And thanks for taking my late night texts when I get concerned about certain things not, not working the way they do. On top of that, they've managed all of our bond projects with no small feat. Thank you, Bob. Our campuses are gems in the community. We have you and your campus services staff to thank for that. As many of you know, I joined the college in the summer of 2018. I was not here for the passage of the bond in 2014. So I get to stand up here and just reap the, the benefits of all the work that, of those who came before me, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, I'm thankful for all the long hours and the hard work that all of you put into to get that bond passed. I'm especially thankful for the work the college community and our partners accomplished before my arrival. You position the college for continued growth and future success. As you know, we partner with businesses and public agencies, government entities, we have people sitting on our advisory boards. We have people hiring our interns. Good to see you, Claire. I'm glad to see you you're doing well. I think you're back there somewhere. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, you donate equipment and expertise. You, you're guest speakers in our classes. You come to our career fairs, and you hire our students and support our college. For more than 50 years, <clears throat> actually almost 55 years, Clackamas Community College has provided job training and education to students who have made a difference in the workforce. Our mission is the same today as it was when CCC opened in 1966, with 93 part-time students taking classes at Gladstone High School. It was to provide quality education and training to people in Clackamas County. Today, we boast a diverse student body of about 20,000 students. Without the involvement of the community, CCC would not be in the strong and vibrant educational institution it is today, and what it will continue to be for the next 50 years. So. Finally, it's time to unveil the, the Wachino Welcome Center dedication plaque. This building is a product of the hard work of those who were here before me. I want to thank all of you who are part of that bond pack or helped campaign for the 2014 bond. Without you, this building wouldn't be here. Thank you for belief in the, in the college and your commitment to serving our students. You all made this possible. It took a small army of tireless CCC supporters to get that bond passed supported by our Board of Education at the time, who is dedicated to expanding and improving our offerings and services to our students. Now I'd like to invite the CCC Board of Education up to help unveil the Wachino Welcome Center dedication plaque. Summer, if you could please come up and join us too. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Kennedy, Greg Ochoa, if you could always please come up as well. <clears throat> To close, I want to thank all of you for supporting Clackamas Community College and joining us today's celebration. Those of you who are here and those of you who are online, it's a lot of hard work from a lot of people from both inside and out the college to get here. This building is a wonderful testimony to the support we have from each and every one of you in the community at large. Um, again, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank Dean of Academic Foundations and, and Connections, Tara Spray, for helping shepherd this process forward. Thank you, Tara, for all that work. <clears throat> So now is the fun part. Please join, enjoy our new building. But of course, don't just run amok. Be mindful of social distancing and congregating in large groups. 
Um, you'll be exiting the building out these doors. And as you do, please help yourself to a cupcake with a Welcome Wachino, Wel Wachino Welcome Center branded mouse pad. Thanks, everyone, for coming and being a part of this today. Really special time for us. Thank you.